We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Uh, so tonight, I've been out of town for a little while. I didn't have a lot of prep time. I couldn't do a lot of research. So what we're going to do is we're going to get those questions right here, live from the awesome folk in the lobby, our chat room here on Twitch. We like to do one of these AMA episodes every month or two as a good way to interact with you fine folk, as well as giving us a bit of a break prepping questions and answers. So, which is useful because like, seriously, I, I, like I knew I was going to cut it close. I didn't think I was going to walk in the door a couple minutes before we go live. <laughs> so I do apologize. You know, my hair is a little disheveled this week. Alrighty. So uh, now is your chance chat room to uh, get in any questions you may have. They can be gaming related or not. This is an AMA after all. Now, one of the things I did not have time to do is we always ask our Discord if they have any questions. I did. So if the Discord have anything, Sean will have to grab those. I haven't seen. Now, I am going to start with one from someone we uh, we had some comments from earlier. So to get us started, I have a question from Chris Lundgren, who is a fan who frequently comments on our stuff on social media and YouTube. We highlighted one of their questions before. And it is, what is your favorite, if you have one, Star Trek board game or miniatures game? Have you and I actually played a Star Trek game together? Uh, an RPG, but never a board game. No. Actually, it's, it says game. So <laughs> honestly, we, we have I, played a we Star Trek played, RPG. And I got to say, that's up there. That was really up there. That was one of the best RPG sections we ever had. So the game we are talking about is FASA, F-A-S-A, FASA Star Trek, the first edition. Not even the second edition, not the Star Trek Three Starship Combat Simulator. But the first printing box set, which I bought off eBay, which is completely different than what I was going to say before Sean mentioned that. So Facet Star Trek was number one. Um, I have no idea if you can find this. It's a D100 based fantasy role, fantasy role playing game. Sorry, sci-fi role playing game um, set in the 1E Star Trek that was published before Next Generation even existed. Now, there is a Next Generation source book for this that came out later. Um, it very much was one of the first light pass systems. So like people like to talk about travelers light pass system that this had this. So of course you were going to Starfleet Academy and you tried to see how far you got through the Academy, how many years you were in there. And you made all these little die rolls to see where you went. And what I loved about that game was its combat system that I assume at this point inspired XCOM. Because it was one of those systems that based on a couple of your stats, you got so many points to do things, but it was super tactical. So it was like turning 45 degrees was 0.5 points and pulling your phaser was three points and taking two steps forward was another set of points. So I have to say probably my favorite Star Trek game is FASA Star Trek First Ed. Fair enough. Now, it did say board game or miniatures game. Miniatures game, I would have to say Starfleet Battles. I will admit it's all because of nostalgia and fond memories and people geeking out about the game for years. So the first time I ever played Starfleet Battles was at a a, com a board game convention here in Windsor, Ontario, that was held at the University of Windsor. And I met some dude. This is this is where it gets creepy. Um, I met some dude. I don't remember his name even. Big dude. And we were hanging out. We got along and we hit it off. And he's like, come up to my room and play Star Trek with me. And he had like back then they rented out because it was in the summer. It was at the university. The dorms were rented out so people could pay like 30 bucks or whatever to stay overnight. And I went up and we played on the floor because <laughs> the room was so small that there were two bunks and no table. And we were both laying on the beds, leaning over and moving chits. And, and I just remember it was like my ship versus his ship. And like spending six rounds figuring out where, like, where the missiles went. And I remember picturing Wrath of Khan with when they fired the torpedo and it's flashing off into the cloud and seeing that with shits and like my brain at that time, you know, this is this is 90s, maybe 80s. I think this was 90s. Probably it had to be 90s by this point. I was still pretty young. And I'm like, I remember going, oh, my God, this feels just like Star Trek. And it was the whole thing where it was you know, the, the impulses and spending energy to move your thing. And it's impulse three. What happens? Well, the torpedo gets closer. Okay. It's impulse four. What happens? Okay. Your shields have gone up. Oh, it's impulse this. And I loved it. 
The problem with that game is I had a great time that night because whatever big dude who brought me back to his room <laughs> name was taught me how to play and I had a great time. So then years later, I picked up the box set, like the original, and someone had like all the expansions in it. And Deanna and I sat down to learn that game and props to big dude because, man, I don't know who can learn it. So then years later, they came up with Federation Commander, which is a simpler version. Still, like, like unfathomably complicated. And then they came up with like, I don't know, it was like a little booklet, learn to play. And that was like, I kind of made sense. So Deanna and I sat down and tried to play. And we actually had fun that game. But like, we never went back to it. So, so I don't know. I, 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 I would love to, to get more into it. But I'm just saying, start, start. Trek Starfleet Battles, the original, marking off the things, spending your energy, marking off your engines. Like I had a lot of fun with it, though I only really had a small amount of experience with it. Um better is I think it's called Star Trek Fleet Captains, which I have to thank a local gamer for getting me into. And that was the ripoff of X Wing. And maybe I'm being mean by calling it a ripoff, but there, there was a attack wing dragon, Dungeons and Dragons, and there was a Star Trek one. That was actually really solid, but I only played it once. By the time I played it, it had already gone out of print, so I was really tempted to pick it up. And in X-Wing, what matters the most is what upgrades you put on your ship. You pick a pilot, but your pilot really just determines how good your ship is. The pilot doesn't do much. And then you buy a bunch of upgrades. Whereas the Star Trek Attack Wing was all about your crew, which, man, is like talk about theme between Star Wars and Star Trek. You, it was all about your crew. You could do boarding actions. There were ways to not just shoot each other, and it was really neat, but I only played once. So that's probably going to be my second favorite miniature game, but I haven't played many. Board games, I've got to go with Ascendancy. Star Trek Ascendancy, the big, I guess you'd call it 4X. It was a three-player-only game when it came out where asymmetric, the Federation's going around trying to proselytize and convert people to join the Federation. The Klingons are going around trying to conquer people and the Romulans are just trying to be sneaky and subvert everyone and take over everything through subterfuge. And that was what came in the base game. And then they put out like the Ferengi expansion, which had totally different rules and added rules for money that weren't even in the game before because of the Ferengi. And then they came up with a, a Borg expansion, which allowed four players. But what you could do is you could have the Borg as a fourth player, even if you played with three players. And many people call it Star Trek in a box. And I've got to agree. It is the most you are moving your fleet. You're playing a faction in Star Trek you'll ever get. Honorable mentions to the Star Trek version of Castle Panic, which I think is called Star Trek Panic. I'm not positive, but you're playing your typical Panic game where you have your, it's, it's castle defense. You have your castle in the middle Star and you're Trek. drawing chips from the bags and you're putting the chips into various hexes or, or sectors around you. And they're constantly moving in. And if they eventually hit you, you take damage or whatever, right? Um, but the Star Trek, and in the middle is the Enterprise. And it's a full 3D cardboard Enterprise. And then you have plastic shields you put around the outside. And you're doing things like turning the ship and firing the phasers and trying to tower defense it. And it's really well done, but it's long. And it was just too long. Like, it was just too long and too complicated and hard. And I want to love it. But I, I think with the right group, if I get like, I have a feeling if Sean came down and we played and we we got into the Trekkie mood, we'd probably have a good time. But we're like group of gamers who are yes and no into Star, Star Trek. It did not go great. So interestingly, Castle Panic is a 1.6, whereas yeah. Star Trek Panic is a 2.26. Uh, yeah. No, no, that, <laughs> so that it's, sounds it's, right. It's definitely that step up. Uh, you know, if you're expecting Castle Panic, there is definitely a big jump uh, from one to the other. Yeah. Uh, and it's I, another, I it's an extra 30 minutes too. It's a Castle yeah, Panic is a 60 long. minute game. Star Trek Panic is a 90 minute game. I would say it was a double that when we played. Like it was like three hours the first time we played. And I'm like, I want to like it. It seems good. And I got to say, I love the look of it. And they had some really neat stuff where they had overlays for as different parts of your ship got damaged. It looked like it was on fire. Oh, it's no longer on Amazon. I wonder if they pulled the license, Deanna is saying. Yeah, there's only one version. It's only, it was only ever released in 2016. Uh, I have a copy. Maybe someone will offer me $220 <laughs> for it. Oh, yeah. Those are my favorite Star Trek. I, you know what? I'm going to keep talking about Star Trek just for a bit. Um, there are a bunch of terrible ones. 
the the roll the rolling one was bad. Um, but uh, a shout out to the what's what's the the new universe called the Kelvin universe that was called the Kelvin universe. Oh, that's I, a new track. I know. I forgot. I don't know. I know what it'd be. Whatever the director's name is. I thought that was Kelvin. No. The Kelvin universe. Um, the Kelvin universe one. I th- it, maybe I'm wrong on this. Whatever the new track, new track, whatever you want to call it um chris pine trek whatever <laughs> pine trek i've heard it called uh they put out one called star trek expeditions oh, yeah okay. kelvin timeline kelvin. i was right sure all right I, i'm not a star trek fan as yes, you can obviously. Tell. <laughs> i am yep. I, I i i am as much a star trek fan as i am a star wars fan and everyone knows how much i just don't i don't get enough reason to talk about star trek i guess uh that was fantastic but it was all about away missions and it was really well done like i it used hero clicks figures but they they weren't you couldn't play hero clicks with them and you had the two ships up in space so you had your ship and you had the klingon bird of prey coming in meanwhile you're on the planet trying to solve a bunch of problems and it was really well done and i strongly recommend it the problem is the next time you play it will be the same it'll randomize where things are but that's it and you're playing the same storyline over and over and yeah there's a couple branching paths but they don't go enough different ways really good game to pull out now and then yeah i'm i'm as much as I am not a Star Trek or really Star Wars fan, um, I enjoy them as, as what they are, but I've always tended to be a hard science fiction, yes. uh, whereas Star Wars and Star Trek are soft science fiction. I mean, arguably, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars is isn't science fiction at all, yeah. in, in debated, uh, yes. in, in depending on, your, on how you want to argue it. But I just came across this Star Trek Frontiers, uh, specifically, Star Trek Front- specifically Star Trek Frontiers with the return of Khan expansion. Oh, I don't have that. Um, which uh, brings it up to a 4.69 weight. <laughs> okay, so so Star Trek Frontiers, I think, is a better Star Trek in a box than Ascendancy, but it's overly complicated, overly difficult, and the component quality is garbage. Like, it's so bad that it's annoying to play. The cards are so flimsy. You just, you're playing it going, someone update this game, someone print a new version. I'm sorry for hacking the publisher on this one. Well, it's just Mage Knight, right? I, yeah, it's WizKids. Yeah. It, it's, WizKids somehow has this license. So Danielle called out five-year mission. That is the dice one. I did not enjoy that one at all. I, I owned it and sold it. It was called five-year mission, and the whole point was that the old crew can run into the new crew, and you can play them both. But it was just a bad Yahtzee ripoff where you're you're trying to roll the set patterns on dice to complete missions. It didn't feel like Star Trek at all. Now, I am going to call out one that's now out of print, but everyone used to talk about is the Star Trek deck building game, which was generally one of the worst Star Trek or one of the worst deck builders I ever played. And it was just whoever got the best ship first won the game. But then they put out two expansions. So there was the original. Uh, it was the next gen. And then there was the the original series, which was better because the ships were better balanced. Then they did a next gen second chance or something. But then they did one with the Borg. And the Borg had a way to play co-op, and that was amazing. And it felt like Star Trek, and you were building a crew, and you were trading technology, and you were using your skills. And the whole thing was you were being assimilated, and those were the bad cards in your deck. And if you ever drew an entire hand of five assimilation cards, you were out of the game. You were assimilated. So it was all about mitigating that. That was fantastic. But the other versions were terrible. Yeah, it's... uh... Five year missions got a six five, which for a Star Trek game is pretty low. Oh, it's it's <laughs> like it's bad. You got to be a real fan. I think it's Nitzia, or no, it's not. It's David E. Witcher. Yeah. So I had to look that up. Mayfair, but it's a Mayfair. So that, that it's, also it's a Mayfair Euro. No, it was funny because I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw this in. I won't have much to say, and I'm like, wait, I own a lot more Star <laughs> Trek games than I'm thinking I own. And then oh, final shout out because Deanna's favorite game. The original Star Trek, the trading card game from Decipher. That is the game Deanna collected over Magic. She loved it. We had a ton of fun with that game. It was that, neat. It was I may have play actually that. played, you like borrowed one we of your decks that one. or your dad's decks or something and, and yeah. then played that. I never collected yeah. it, but I, I think I, do, I did play that one. That was very thematic. Your deck, and, and again, it was you had two lines of planets. You were doing your own thing while still kind of interacting with the other player. All right, so uh, all right, so there we got a nice SEO happy Star Trek game convert. That could have been a full episode. I had no <laughs> clue that could have been a full episode. 
that could have been a full episode. So starting off, our, our first question of the night from the chat room came from Eurogamer Girl, who asked, what's a game you've played this year that you want to play more of? All of them? <laughs> Pretty close. Um, right now, that would be All the Bus. Um, we're going to be talking about that more when we get into the weekend review. First experience with All the Bus, I dug it. Everyone else hated it. Second experience <laughs> Again, with All the Bus. I didn't hate it. I, I don't know. First experience, you weren't there. It was with Tori and Kat. Oh. Remember? Tori, Tori was like, I hate this game. Oh, no. I, I played, oh, you yeah, were there yeah, I was there. Yeah, no, yeah. Tori hated it. Tori I hated it. I was I was in the air because there were a bu- there was a bunch of extreme going on. And yeah. it, it wasn't. You didn't have an opinion on the first Yeah, game. it wasn't great, but it was. But it could have been us. Right. Yes. It was one of those things. We, we made enough. And Tori hated it. <laughs> uh, like, really, I, I have not had him have that negative reaction to a game in a long time. Um, so then we played the second game. Oh, and, and, and Deanna hated it. Deanna's like, I, you know, I'm, I, I hate that we have to review this because it means I have to play it three more times. And Sean loved it until we got to final score. Yeah. Until, until it was determined that, oh, look, there is this huge runaway issue that we didn't catch. And is it a runaway issue because we missed it? Or is it a huge flaw in the game? Yeah. Which I, the uh, spoiler for later, so far it hasn't happened again. So far, it hasn't happened at all. And we had a game where I totally went for that. And I had 10 banked and she had three, but she still won. Okay. But there was more mitigation. There was, oh, I know you have the ability to bank three coins. So I'm going to make sure you never have three coins to bank. And that's what I thought was going to happen. And I've got to say the biggest thing with that game is Deanna has completely (laughs) flip-flopped. After three games playing two players, she's like, no, I like this one. This is a good game. Yeah, which, I, which, I think it's. I, I thought it had possibility, yeah. it, but there was a potentially glaring issue that concerned yeah. me after our second. Which, play. which so far, I, again, I, we haven't played enough. We we didn't play all that much this weekend. There was one night at one particular place we played a bunch of games in a row, and and I still there's some dumb things in there though, like the the, the why the upgraded components don't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> um, the vault thing is just awkward. I, I the fact I stole a component from another game to make this work better. There's issues, but I want to play more all the best because I want to deep dive. We haven't touched any of the new new cards or anything like that, but that's more of a like new game of mine. I'm hyped about still more so than, you know, game I tried for the first time this year that I want to play more of Um, Dune Imperium. Yes. Dune Imperium. We still haven't reviewed because I think I've only played it three times. Like I haven't even hit my usual. We have and to I think two of those were with review. me. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm at like maybe four plays, two to three plays. And technically, there's a play. I, I we're probably at four, counting the two player game Deanna and I played that we really didn't enjoy. And yeah, I have sign, no interest sign in me up again. <laughs> sign me up. Yeah. Love that game. So yeah, I want to play more Dune Imperium. Um, that's a big one. Uh, Scythe. I I'm worried Scythe is going to disappear. It's like we've reviewed it now, right? The obligation's done, and I'm worried it's going to go on the shelf. I will admit, this weekend we were really tempted to pick up an expansion. So one of the expansions that exists called Scythe Encounters. And all it is, is more of the encounter deck, the deck where you go there and interesting things happen. You get interesting choices. It's just a bunch of those. So it would have been really easy to throw in um, because I'm sure Sean's not aware. Essex actually has a really solid board game store now. Bike store. (laughs) Yeah, both. It's both. Yeah, I I was surprised by that. Like we had we were literally at Schinkel's Market and came out and went, what's that? (laughs) And we walked across the street. Bikes and board games. Yes. That's a big one. other ones we played this year i'd like to hear deanna's answer on this too you're welcome to to jump in and chat uh some mention something in chat what about you sean besides doing uh, anachrony is another one um you know i finally oh, yeah. finally that's got not that new to me this year but no yeah. it's not but it, but it's new to me this year and that's and that's yeah. definitely something uh on the on the list um i need to play anachrony more and actually use expansion content well yeah exactly i mean we I have we, this giant box from massive box and we we just dabbled with the basic content uh and there's all these other brazen things that we never even touched uh and yeah. there's so much there is a ton there was stuff when we were repacking it into the kickstarter box that was still in shrink <laughs> and i'm like do i take it out i'm like i guess i take it out because it'll fit better yeah a Euro Gamer Girl is saying that Dune Imperium is better with the expansion. And I've heard that. And the second expansion is going to fix a couple more things. And I, to be fair, we just haven't played it enough yeah, to find I, I things would... needing fixing. <laughs> um, True. I, I, I want the expansions because I want more content and I want some of the the other, um, you know, groups uh, that are coming from them. 
but as the far as fixing goes, X, and X is just the coolest thing in Dune, in my opinion. That that is the part of the the Butlerian Jihad and X were the two parts that I wanted expanded on. Except then, dude, son expanded on the Butlerian Jihad, and it was kind of like the Clone Wars and Star Wars, and I was like, what what's happening? Why? Oh yeah, so and, and yeah, we we agree with that. Uh, the two player experience yes. wasn't great. No. <laughs> No, 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 not at all. We did not enjoy yep. that. Yeah, so absolutely. Two player for Dune Imperium was not was no. not ideal. <laughs> I, I will not do that again unless the expansion changes it in some way. And that's one of those I'm like, oh, I, you almost shouldn't have put that on the box. <laughs> uh, so Deanna saying Arnak, assuming it was new to her this year. See, Arnak, I'm getting my fix by playing on Board Game Arena. I'm, I'm not having a big urge to take out the physical game and get it down and get it played because we play often enough on Board Game Arena. Right. Oh, there you go. The expansion's fixed two player. So that, that's intriguing. Uh, what else have I played? You know what? Here, I, I, again, it's an AMA, so I haven't done research. Let me very quickly bring up my board game geek, what I played this year, and see if I can find any more. You got other ones? Arna? Uh, or not Arna? Yeah, what else? Anachrony. Got? Uh, yeah, it's a, I can see all of a sudden. Dune Imperium Immortality. Now the community is saying best two to four. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a big Whoa. change. I guess there was a big announcement today. Disney's getting into the CCG collectible card game market, eh? Oh, I didn't even see that. Disney Lorcana trading card game. Oh, or maybe I saw there, something about hot, it, but I didn't know. Hmm. I, I, we barely have been online, <laughs> honestly. Like I've tried to avoid being online right um buy a game date range honestly i i know it's not a great game but uh you know as a as a way to get your daughters to the table more i would be happy to play a couple more games of villainous which oh, is new okay. to me this year my, my daughter will happily do <laughs> exactly I'm, i know your daughter loves it um, i don't know it's, i i, I only had the one experience well with it so i don't know uh i i need to, I, I would need to try more um oh here's a good example of one charterstone because we can't like we finished it it's done and i don't want to play now that it's done i would love to play more charter stone yes we bought the campaign thing uh the thing is i want to play it with the same group and that group is currently working through a different campaign game uh terror below is another one i would love to give another try i don't think okay. our first experience was the best experience for oh, that it game was too late at night i think it, it could have been a much better game than it turned out being i agree uh point salad i'd say but i'm playing tons of it like we played a lot on the weekend. Uh no, 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 no. Chiseled. we we've been enjoying. Mm hmm Yeah. I would I would happily play more chiseled. No, no, no. It's interesting. No. I Dune Imperium is rated as a weight three. And it doesn't feel that heavy to me. Yeah, maybe that's me. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I I I, I unless I'm, I'm missing something about the game. <laughs> I, I, uh, Ex Libris. I am really enjoying Ex Libris. I want to play more Ex Libris because I want to see more combos. Mm. Bell Smashers. Eh. I still have to try that one. <laughs> it's neat. Yeah. It's too long. That's what it, it, it feels like it should be a filler game and it's not. Right. Spelling games to me should be shorter. I, I don't know if it's too much brain, too much thinking. Underwater Cities. I have not played enough of that game. Yeah, no, I could go for another game. I, I not, I, it was I not really, as fantastic as I thought some people made it out to be, but it was good. And I could definitely, you know, again, mm -hmm. I, I never felt I never felt the same way about Terraforming Mars either. I know right. you're the hugest fans and I enjoy Terraforming Mars, uh, but I never fell in love with it. And and I, I feel like my first experience, at least with Underwater Cities, was very much the same. It's like this is a good, solid game, but. It hasn't hooked me. It, you know, it hasn't gotten yeah. me to that. Oh, I got to play this all the time. But yeah, I definitely. And I got to admit, that's kind of what happened to me. Underwater Cities always feels like I haven't figured it out yet. Like I haven't reached that level where I can plan ahead and know what I'm going to do. Like I don't, oh, I don't sit down to play that game. Underwater Cities is on BGA. Is it? Oh, we need oh. to be doing that. <laughs> there you go. No, under like, like Terraforming Mars, I'll get my starter hand and I'll plan out a whole strategy and then I'll see the cards that come out and I'll adapt and... I feel I need to get to that point in underwater cities. Yeah. Whereas underwater cities, I like, I, I sit there and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I got these cards. I guess I get the most stuff. If I take that red action with this red card right. and then eventually maybe I start getting a combo going and it, I try to turn that into points. I just, I still feel like I'm floundering in that game. Right. Uh, you should play more alien frontiers. Yep. 
Zykeem's fantastic. Uh, that That's might be weird. It. Underwater I, Cities isn't coming up on BGA. Hero Quest, I should play more because I we spent a lot of money on it. Uh, those are the big ones. Like looking through what I played this year. So those those are those are the biggest. Uh if there are fans of uh um King of Tokyo, uh BGA did release King of Tokyo Power Up today. Oh, that's their good. first expansion. To me, that that's a required expansion for for so it, it took them a year. They're now they're now it's been now been out for a year, but they've uh, they've added King of Tokyo power up. Yeah, uh, I to me that, that that's a must have expansion. That is most definitely a must have expansion. Yeah, I was gonna, uh, I, the the underwater okay. cities maybe on Yukata or something like that. Could be. Oh, yeah. Beyond the Sun's on there. I really want to try Beyond the Sun, but I think that seemed like a game I want to play in person. Yeah, first. it's another one of those. You know, let's let's not learn that online, maybe. Um, I, I did finally lose a uh, a Tigris and Euphrates oh, there you uh, go. game. So maybe I would do have to learn it now, but <laughs> we'll see. They finally figured out, everyone else finally figured out what they were doing and went, oh, wait, we let him do that? What? Wait, <laughs> why are we letting him get away with that? Uh, All right. I think that's probably pretty good for alrighty. games we want to play more of. All right. Now, here's, an, here's one from Ron Talks Tabletop. Thank you again, Ron, for uh, resubscribing today. Yes, Question, what board games do you feel that best scratch your own RPG itch? None. Board games don't scratch the RPG <laughs> itch. <laughs> uh, that's the simple answer. I, I, will... I, I, I would say I, I could see if, if I was able to get myself into an active in-person Blood Bowl League, that would touch it. That would, that would at least start heading in the right direction for me yeah. but but generally no i agree there there really aren't games that that do the same thing uh I, <laughs> I guess the only the only difference would be crossover games like if you consider for the queen a board game or card game then that 100 percent that right because that game totally scratches an rpg itch i love but to me it's an rpg Sure. And like to me, that's not it. But I can see people calling it a board game or a card game because you don't make a character, you don't have character sheets, there's no campaign. Like that totally depends on your definition of a role playing game. So I guess my answer would be for the queen. Sure. Um, I will say for the, the Tales of the Loop, when I play that game, especially with Tori and Kat and Deanna, we got into character and we had a lot of fun making up stories or what was actually happening, right? Like the, the whole, this person uh, earlier in the game tried to help another kid go to over a chain link fence and failed and the kid got injured to three rounds later doing something completely different. And this character is not allowed to help because of this, whatever, uh, cubes in this place. And then the person playing them going, there's no way I'm doing that. Do you remember what happened at the fence? Like that part of that game was amazing. Unfortunately, game. <laughs> unfortunately, I feel like because you were right. Absolutely. I mean, that definitely happened. I was there at the table. It happened. But I feel like part of why that happens is because you're responding to the fact that it's a crappy game and you need <laughs> to make it more enjoyable. So That's... why not our play, role play along with it? Uh, anything to make your your your, you know, make the table Find feel the more enjoyable. Uh, there's nothing wrong. And there's nothing wrong with making your own fun, but it yeah. does not make it a good board game. I still say it's better at three. It's it's playable at three. I haven't gotten rid of it yet, but that's probably because I got rid of a huge pile of stuff. <laughs> All uh, right, uh, yeah. we'll keep up on this one because I'm, I'm going to keep talking about it. But in the meantime, chat room, we could use some more questions. Uh, there was a, a you know what? Up, we could I have to say, more. I remember. Do you want to call Dark Future a board game? Because yeah, we got into some hundred percent yeah, board game. We we got it. There was some there was some role playing in that, and there's I, yeah. I feel like that that definitely. Well, there Touches was the role-playing in that you're leveling up your, your driver, yeah. which was just a number. You're leveling up your car. It's as it's, it's much a role-playing game as Battle Tech is. Yeah. Right? You're getting your money from your matches, but that was all using the campaign rules. Using the campaign rules from uh, White Line Fever. Did that. I'm trying to think of others. Um, Star Wars Imperial Assault, to an extent. Now, I only played as the Empire, but I very much at the feel that I was, you know, Vader sitting on Mustafar planning things, or I was Count Dooku, or 
I, I was a, not the emperor, but I was some form of person coordinating things so that bad things would happen to the characters. Because you literally like stack the deck at the beginning of the game. You look through, you you get these sets of operation cards, and you're like, I'm going to use this one, which is all about my stormtroopers will be tough. Or I'm going to use this one that means there'll be more traps on the map. And you kind of pick from them, and you make a deck, and that's the stuff that will come out. Now, with that, that's a, the part of that game was all the expansions would give you more. So, like, if you picked up, like, the General Veers expansion, which I've never understood why he's such a big character in Star Trek. He's, like, the general who's on one of the ad at the beginning of, of, I'm like, most people don't even know his name, but for some reason fans really like General Veers, and I don't know why. I think he talked back to Vader and didn't die or something. But anyway, you get the General Veers expansion, and while it comes with rules to play him as Skirmish, and it gives him a card that you can buy him during the game, but it gives you a whole new one of these plots that you can use. And I'm probably using the wrong names because I haven't played Imperial Assault in more than five years. Like the operations, plots, whatever they're called. But I think the players very much felt like they were playing characters. Like like with the leveling up and and like decisions were made in that that I think were suboptimal because some things were cooler. And to me, that's where the RPG breaks in. Right. Where where if you don't get that point where you're like, no, I'm keeping this cloak because it looks cooler, then you've reached RPG realm. Whereas you're like, no, I'm taking this because it's plus two. <laughs> you know? Even though my character would probably never use it, but I don't care, it's plus two. And I think that's the that's the gap that got bridged, at least with my group. Here's an interesting one. I just discovered Gaslands has a legacy system. Okay. And I could totally picture us in the past, I don't think anymore, but when we were when we were younger, I could totally have seen us doing legacy Gaslands and essentially play, doing our, an RPG out of it. Uh, right. I, I, sec, I still, my, my, they're my sons now, but I have the, 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 the Hot Wheels collection that could have uh, done quite a bit. I, I, Gloomhaven did a bit of it. We definitely did some role playing, but we, all, we always played optimally. Right. That was very much, you had to. Gloomhaven is hard. Do not feel bad about playing on an easier difficulty if you were playing <laughs> Gloomhaven. But there was definitely character moments, especially when you would get a choice. Our group would get into character whenever we had to, you know, you're at the end and this happens and someone drops this thing. What do you do? I, I, whatever they were called. There was the Gloomhaven cards and then the road cards, I think they were called, or the city cards and the road yeah, cards. Yeah, city cards and road cards. Yeah, we used to get in character for those. And while there was smack talk and stuff while we were playing, that was definitely in character. And while the, there, there's slight spoiler, Gloomhaven's been out long enough. There's a thing really early in the game where you go and murder a, a bunch of the PCs race. And I was just like, whoa, okay, we are not the heroes. This is not what I expected from this game. And while one of the players was playing the race that we just basically went and genocided, and I'm like, wow, dude, are you okay with this? And he's like, well, I guess I have to be because the game made me do it. But there were some definitely some stuff like that. So so I, I would put Gloomhaven in there. So I, still, it, none of it scratches the rpg itch. no i i Me. agree they're, they they're, there's if anything it actually makes the itch worse it's that it's yeah. that you can just almost get to it and now you re now it really itches because you're thinking about it yeah and i'll admit we were playing star wars imperial assault and one of my players mike murphy was like so when can we play edge of the empire <laughs> like like when can we stop playing the stupid board game and like let, let, let me play my character yeah. he's like i'll make this dude i'll make this character i'm sure i can do it and i'll play him so that, you know, when the stupid thing happens in the board game, because it's a board game, he can go, no, screw that. I pick up the crate and throw it at the droid. Oh, no, the crates are a blocking terrain. You can't actually pick it up. There. All right. So we got a couple more questions from the uh, chat room. They're on a roll tonight. Uh, Darkling Blake Light asks us, do you think too much theme can hurt a game's gameplay or appeal? Definitely. I'm trying to think of an example, though. That, that That's a question that could have used some research on. I uh, think me, it can happen. To me, it's a balance. It's a balance issue, right? It's it's too much theme and not enough gameplay to balance out that theme. Uh, you can be dripping in all the theme of the world. But if it's a cruddy game, it's still a cruddy. It's still a cruddy game. And yeah. I think there are certain designers uh, out there who have fallen into a trap of that. You know, it, it's piling on their theme and trying to get the player to be immersed and in the process forgetting about you know the fact that it's a game and it needs mechanics to work i i would think tales from the loop is an example of this yep 
because the theme was there, but it hurt the mechanics and it made the game too difficult. Like the the, the cooperation rule that you can combine two different pieces of technology to automatically succeed at something, but then the mechanics weren't there to like it came up so infrequently. Yeah, and then the whole once your kid gets scared, you can't ask for help. And I'm like, I get it. You're now scared and you're 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 focused inwards and you no longer can contribute to the rest of the group. But the dice mechanics and that were so terrible with a 25% success rate, you needed that help. Yeah, they, yes, they took I this thematically why. Yeah. They, they took this massive theme that they had from their RPG world, which is fantastic. We we are all fans oh, yeah, of huge the loop. Fans Tales from the, the Loop is amazing. Theme. But when you try to cram that into the board game. Again, it just collapses in on itself yeah. and the experience doesn't work the way they, I think, wanted it to. And that's a shame because, again, we do love the theme mm -hmm. and it kind of broke the game. I think if you detract, if you'd taken a little bit of that theme away and, and helped focus the mechanics on the game and then, you know, dusted the theme over top of it, it probably would have made a better game yes. than, uh, than what they got. Which yeah, is like in that game, like one of the, the house rules that's just great is whenever you take damage, put the cube where you want. And even just doing that makes it mechanically better. Because even, even there were just so many little things in that. The hacking, the yep. entire hacking system. I'm like, you're trying to make this this awesome, epic, thematic battle, and it's just frustrating. Yeah. And uh, Euro Game Girl, and Euro Game Girl has a great point in the chat room. Too much theme in rule books can make it hard to learn absolutely yes. uh, and this goes back to a great twitter post that we talked about i think on sunday uh where there were certain designers going on and talking about how long your rule book should be and you know eight pages single spaced with lots of big pictures is about the limit uh for a you know easy to learn board, you know a a, a for accessible that appeals to the mass yeah, market an accessible says. board game uh and as soon as you start draping all this theme and background in especially in amongst the rules yeah it becomes problematic if you want to add in a, a thematic rule book or you know you teach the game and then you've got pages of, at the end or you've got a couple of pages at the beginning that set up the theme for you before you teach the game that's one thing but it's when you start mixing and mingling the theme mm -hmm. and i think the ghost Twix has made some of that mistake uh and that's Part of why the, the, the three rule books and, and confusions mm -hmm. and things have happened. If one of those rule books was just the story and yes. and the other books were how to play the game. Well, the absolute worst was there was a book that was supposed to be how to learn the game. But all it did was reference the other two books. Yeah. That was actually terrible. That was actually a horrible one. I'm, I'm trying to think of other example. I Like, it's definitely a thing. Like, yep. whenever you get a thing and you're like, well, that's dumb. And they're like, oh, but it fits the theme. Like, I know that happens. I'm just not thinking of any actual examples in front of me right now. Um, what I will say is that I love when the theme matches the mechanics. Like, that's different. Absolutely. But there are definitely examples. Aqualin. Like, Aqualin, there's a perfect example. That should have been abstract shapes. Because uh, uh, why are groups of the same color different fish gathering? Why, why Why is this turtle hanging out with this fish, hanging out with this octopus, and that's worth points? And I'm like, at least the fish school? But, like, turtles might gather together? But, like, it, it just made no sense. And I'm like, why does this even have an underwater theme? They liked their artwork, I guess. It just didn't make any sense whatsoever why this game had this theme. And I'm like, if, if it was one part, yes, you want to group the same type of animal together. Okay. But then why do you want to group the same color of animal? That that it, it totally felt once you got to that point, you're like, oh, you know, this theme doesn't actually work. Just give me a bunch of diamond squares, circles, stars, pluses. Give me the lucky charms shapes and the different colors. And the game would have been better, in my opinion, because instead it's ambiguous and some of the shapes are similar to each other. And it's really easy to forget what you're trying to group and gather or pay attention to what your opponent's grouping and gather. And I mean, I, you know, I've said this a number of times in the show. I've been on record. Waterdeep. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, to me, it's a... Yeah, but I don't think the theme gets in the way. It doesn't get in the way, but again, it's, it's, it's meaningless. It, it doesn't, to me, the game, it's, it's excess. Um, you, you, you can keep the cards clearer if you didn't have to cram all the D&D &D stuff on there. 
uh you know stuff like that it's it's uh it's just unnecessary and that's where it doesn't meld well whereas i think something like quacks of quedlinburg it's not a heavy theme it's not an in-your-face yeah. theme but it actually works it yeah. actually makes a whole lot of sense what's going on in that oh, game what i love about that one is what i love when the theme of a game helps me teach it where it's just logical why this would happen and I can teach quacks in a way that it makes sense, even though I'm not quite sure why rat tails would thicken your pot, but like, and it can explain it in a way that it all makes sense. You're like, look, you're in a fair, you're trying to get people's attention. So you want your pot to bubble. When you put these in these snap bangs in, it causes your pot to bubble, but you put too many in and it explodes. So you want a really excited pot and you want to put in more ingredients. So you don't want to put in one, you want to put twos or fours in because they take up more space, which means they move further. And I can like just totally explain it. And then I'm like, okay, now after the first round's done, you notice this guy's way ahead. Everyone's paying attention to their pot. What can you do to try to get people's attention? Well, you start sneaking in rat tails. But the problem is, is people are still paying attention to seconds. So they don't get as many rat tails. First and last, no one's paying attention. They get to throw a bunch of rat tails in. What's it do? It thickens your pot. And like by describing it that way, people are just, yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah, whenever you can use the theme to teach the mechanic or uh, or use the mechanics to explain the theme, it's a great balance. Um, and, and that's uh, sadly lacking in a lot of games these days. But when it does hit that sweet spot, really mm -hmm. makes for a, a more enjoyable game that people are just willing to play more because it's easier to grasp, right? There's, you don't have as much of a teach. Um, or even if, you, even if it is a harder game, even if it's a, a heavier game, it it clicks in faster, right? Yes. I mean, you know, maybe it's one of those games where you want to play a play around and then restart afterwards. But when you play yeah. that round, you're like, oh, well, when I spin the pulsar, this does this and that. Yeah. Oh, of course. There we go. Perfect. Let's get this. Let's play. One of the best examples of that is Veen Host Deluxe. I remember teaching Jeff and Sheila Seuss. Now, Jeff and Sheila Seuss are gamers, but Sheila's not really familiar with heavy games, and Jeff's into eclectic weird games he's not he's not a he's not not like a, a party gamer but he's also never played a vital Lacerda, right and i sit down and i teach them this game and i'm like look these are the different wine regions of portugal and of course each wine is going to have distinct flavors and they're known for different things in this region their wine's not as good but they developed a cellaring system that makes the wine better and i can teach that game and absolutely every action you can take in the game makes perfect sense thematically it's I'm going to go here to do this thing to collect this because I would do that to make my grapes worth more. Or no, I have really weak grapes, but if I hire a bunch of tasting houses, I can make up for it for the money. And similarly, I, wine's just a good theme for board games. Bean Hose, which is, is, is in my opinion, it's Vital Lacerda's um, Bean Host Deluxe, sorry, Viticulture. Viticulture is the zoomed in. You're just playing one region. Um, not that the games are literally related, but that game just makes sense because you're like, I need to send a worker to the mash ton to be able to mash my grapes. And when I do that, I now get low quality grapes. Well, every turn I leave that counter there, they age and get better. But at some point, I'm going to have to sell some of my wine to get enough money to be able to buy more fields to get more grapes. So how late do you and that's a big thing in Vinos is how long can you wait to sell your grapes? And And it's just makes sense because you're looking at grapes and you're looking at this and getting a seller does this and hiring more migrant workers lets you harvest more grapes. And like, it's, it's another one where I find the theme is really well tied in that makes it easier to explain. But like Veen Host Deluxe is probably one of the heavier games I own. Yeah. And it makes perfect sense. Yeah, Veen Host Deluxe is a 4.0. And that's yeah, not and a game that I would introduce to people like Jeff and Sheila initial right. for the most part Off because bat, right? yeah i mean because that's a, a meaty game with a lot of decision points yes but and it, and it, as 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 your gamer girl says you know when it makes sense thematically it reinforces the gameplay yes plus people remember things that make sense like it ties to real life it ties into their personal experiences ties into what you know about wine everyone knows wine gets better with age if there's a mechanic and you go, well, the wine ages, you're like, well, of course the wine ages. Everyone knows wine ages. Oh, if I sell cheese at my winery, more people will come. Well, yes, because people sell cheese at wineries. If it was like, if I sell spinach at my winery, more people will come. You're like, well, what? What? Spinach? Really? 
Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, technically, I think we've already answered the next question in a way. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, so. We kind of we kind of moved in without me actually trying to do that. So Eurogamer Girl had actually asked, "What's your favorite theme and mechanic combo? Uh, where where if a game has both, you'll always be interested in." Um, well, okay, that's the the first part of the question. Uh, Vinhost Deluxe, Vinhost Deluxe does it the best, and like I said, I love teaching that game. Plax is another one where I love teaching the game because it just makes sense. Um, Pulsar 2845 tends to be pretty good, but you need someone with the right mindset. I'm um, trying to think of others. Like Azul does not. I right. can't teach Azul quickly. I, I can mechanically tell you how it works. What, one of the, one of the things so, I find, so. um, and, and this isn't really a theme or mechanic as it sort of falls under mechanic, is that is the iconography. Uh, it that is actually one of the things that makes a huge difference to me now. Uh, and the more I play games with great iconography, the more, even if it's not going to be a heavy sci-fi game, I may be interested in playing mm. it because it leaves a better experience yep. for the play. Because again, it just makes sense. Uh, and and Anacrity was one of them. Anacrity has some a crazy amount of iconography. And when you first look at mm. it, you go, Oh my God, what is this? But by the time you're done your first turn, every single yes. icon out there makes sense, including the ones that you don't see until the fourth round. Um, and that's another game that honestly I can teach better because of the theme. Yep. Except for the stupid part where I have to front load everything beside before you decide what card to choose. Yes. But once you get into explaining, look, you have these many people, and to go outside, they have to go in a, a suit, and these are the spots the suits can reach. And this big square means lots of people can go there because there's lots of people will trade with the merchants, but there's only actually three people to hire. So you can only go here, but you can also go visit the city council by going up here and take an action that's already taken. And I can show you and, and the whole thing about the wake up your people or give them water is, is thematic and it ties in and I can teach people that and it sinks in. It makes sense. It's like you have two ways to get all your workers back. You can wake them all up and just tell them to get to work or you can slowly wake them up and give them breakfast yeah, and get yeah, them give them breakfast or blow the air horn or blow, <laughs> yeah, yeah basically right yeah. like like we always call it clapping because the one symbol looks like clapping it's like yeah. get up wake up i'm not gonna actually do it because the mic will pick up too much that game's great for explaining in most ways there yeah. there are aspects of anachrony and honestly even the time travel in that's easy to explain yeah because i usually wait till the first turn and go okay is there something you want to buy but you can't afford it do you feel like you can't put enough mechs out on the field? Are you short workers? Well, all you got to do is send yourself stuff from the future, and here's how you do it. Yeah. No, it really does. Uh, it, it really does make things so much easier when you've got that iconography. And I mean, um, Arnak is another one too. It's it's there isn't as much iconography in it, but what's there just makes a lot of sense. Are you walking, boating, bit, yes. or flying? You know, these are the different the the the, the, the different types it's of resources. The upgrades. the upgrades take a bit. What yeah. what do all those different upgrade symbols mean? Mainly the stuff that's on the the exploration track. But you know, I, but even that, I mean, again, it's once you see, it, it's like, oh, that means okay, that's what they're doing. Fine, they're going to use that symbol for to yeah. mean turning or whatever. Sure, upgrading, great. Um, and it, again, it flows really quickly. And again, they've also on top of the iconography use the materials of the yes. pieces that, to that's be different. the new next step thing yeah, that's, that's your them. that's your other uh your other level where where you can really kind of like oh the difference between plastic and cardboard is a game difference yeah, makes sense side yep. did that right Scythe, yep. you got your wooden pieces and your plastic pieces plastic pieces can fight each other wooden pieces can't yep. that's that's the biggest distinction between those Size is another one that once you know it, you can teach it better based on the theme, but it's still pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've yet to learn. How I, 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 and I what I still haven't done is I, I did go back and I played the digital version of Scythe and I and I enjoyed it more than I did. What I need to do is I need to go back into Scythe, reset all my progress and do the tutorial oh, again okay. to see if yeah. having played the game and knowing it now, the tutorial makes any sense or if it's still utter gibberish to me because that was the problem with the side digital i went through the tutorial and i had no yeah. clue it meant nothing to me yeah so. we may we may just talk about icons this one we were yet to shout out the you know tool i realize it's not fair to the rest of the graphic designers out there <laughs> but i'd be happy if you know tool just designed graphically every game ever made I, yeah. i'd be totally cool with that 
Well, yeah, but he, he didn't. Design, who did Anachrony? Because again, I was wondering that. I, I I was thinking about looking it up, but I didn't. He did not do Anachrony. No. Right. So Anachrony. So, yeah, Anachrony was designed. Uh, well, there's a bunch of artists on this. Yeah, but is there any graphic designers listed? Yeah. Did that someone? Because that's one of the new fields on Board Game Geek that wasn't always filled out. No, this one doesn't. Yeah, so it could have been any of the artists. Or yeah, there's else. five different artists on there, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce their names. Uh, there are far Fair too enough. many um, Eastern European accents and uh, flourishes above those letters for me to have any faith in getting it correct at all. Yeah. All right, so favorite theme and mechanic combo. So this isn't necessarily like they go well together, but the two together, if it's a deck building and uh, superheroes, what 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 is it like? I'll pick up every superhero deck builder. I was thinking for you, that's what I'd think for favorite thing and mechanic combo. Uh, I mean, I, yes, but again, I haven't. You know, I didn't go down the road. Of that's true. You never even tried Marvel. I don't um, think. I, I have it sealed in plastic. Um, oh, okay, <laughs> it, it never got opened for various reasons. But uh, uh, actually, is it legendary? It's one of maybe it's legendary. I don't know. One of the Marvel deck, Mar a Marvel deck builder. I guess it must be legendary. I think that's the only one um, that that I got on a deal from 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 tabletop deals, um, but uh, no, again, I like superhero RPGs. The board games not so much for me. Yeah, um, deck builders are definitely uh, a thing. Where so I think if you pro probably sci -fi deck if you builders. can get me like hard sci fi deck builders, I don't think there is such a thing. Um, I don't know how there would necessarily horizons. Maybe that was a different kind of deck building, though. Yeah, yeah, I don't you know. Played Horizons, right? Yeah, no, I did. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. The best iconography we've seen in a game. We're pulling this right out of the chat right now from Pax. We're not going to finish mechanic and combo theme and mechanic. Uh, I I can't uh, I can't think of anything that that sort of I always be interested in. Um, yeah, I, I I do not have a favorite theme. I have themes I don't like. I mean, hard sci-fi is my theme, period. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely going to go. But when it comes, but but to to say there's a favorite mechanic that pairs along with that, I mean, I guess technically, um, Dune could probably be <laughs> Dune Imperium. Yeah. It's hard. It's Back a hard sci-fi sci sci deck builder. Um, and and I definitely did love it. So possibly, possibly, yeah. I, I don't have a favorite theme, but there's themes I don't like. I I don't care about zombies, and I don't care about Cthulhu. Cthulhu mythos. I. I played some games that are good. I I'm I I don't know if I played a good zombie game. I played some Cthulhu games that are good. I like Mansions of Madness. Yeah. Um, that's probably others. I, well, you know what? Uh, Cthulhu Dead, uh, Death May Die was a really yeah that fun was good. game. That was well, but I sold it compared to like, it, well. The problem else is it it had limited play, and, and for the cost of it, what yes. you got in a game versus well, you needed the full in Kickstarter to get the full experience. That was a FOMO problem. That was a, not even it's missed out. I missed out. I didn't get the whole thing. I just got this one box. No, but I, I think even it was incomplete. But even even if you'd gotten the whole box, you're still you're not going to play all the possible combinations. You just not. Right. It's not going to be the interesting that long there. You, you know, there was a ton of stuff there. You could have spent a fortune on it. And realistically, you're going to get through all the scenes once, mm. maybe twice. And it's never going to get played again, except maybe, you know, when you want to show it off. Yeah, um, so themes, yeah. I don't, I, I'm not Cthulhu, not zombies, um, not sports, not, not in like a blood bowl maybe, but that's more <laughs> fantasy favorite. Uh, that's possibly fantasy. Um, not farming. There's just too many farming games. <laughs> um, not cooking. I don't even call that like, like food. I'm just running through various themes in my head. I guess a fantasy, possibly, um, but I love Star like Star Wars. Like, give me a really good Star Wars. Give me a Star well, Star Wars, Wars is builder. fantasy. Let's be yeah, let's let's yeah. not let's not mince words here. Star Wars is a fantasy series, not a give me give series. me a good Star Wars deck builder. I might be interested. I I don't love deck builders. I'm like my favorite mechanic is is the Shogun series of games, which I've now Sean's played two. Of, you you tried all three, haven't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wallenstein, Shogun, and yeah. um. And Immortals, yeah, and never, I love never that mention game. Immortals that, again. <laughs> yeah, I, I even like Immortals. I, of the three, it's the worst. But oh, <laughs> I, I love the Cube Tower. But what I no program movement there, there, there is go. my favorite mechanic. There you go. Yep, because I also love, love, love Robo Rally. Robo you even love Jaws, and yeah, I was so over that planning. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
No, I like programming. That's true. Because I was thinking, I'm like, what is it in, like, and I love the cube tower. But the cube tower is unrelated to that. I just, I love the, you have your hand of provinces in your hand, and you have eight different actions you can do, and you pick which action happens at which province. And only two of them are attacks, so it's not a big battle game. And it's all about trying to outwit your opponents and think of your opponents and where are they going to attack, where are they not. So I got to say that the the programmed movement in Shogun, Wallenstein, Immortals, and I want more, please, um, put out more games like that. Though I, I guess they're already done. So I don't know if that series is ever coming out with any more, but I love those games. And well, what are the themes there? You got Japanese feudal Japan, you got medieval Germany, and you got heaven versus earth. The uh, heaven versus earth, I, I wanted more. I wanted something different than what Bad. you got. It was just two back and forth. It was, it was it, like everyone called it a knife fight in a phone booth, but I'm like, it's a knife fight in a phone booth in a blizzard. Cause <laughs> like it just, it just, yay, you killed all my troops, but then they come back and they kill all your troops. And then his troops come out of nowhere because they were off on the side of the board and he played the right card and it, it was too chaotic. Um, I, I prefer strategy games. Tactics is nice, but I like some strategy too. Yeah. So yeah, I really like that series. So yeah, mechanics and I love Robo Rally. Robo Rally, there's a game I should play again. It's probably been 10 years. Not the new version, the old classic Richard Garfield before he got famous making magic Robo Rally. Yes, I know. Don't put out 80 boards, stick to one or two back and forth, a little zigzagging. I love that. See, and that's and that's one thing I need to play. I have played the new version. I never yeah, played the, the new old versions. Version. Uh, I, someone brought the new version and we played it upstairs at, during on New Year on one New Year's, right? Uh, and I, but I've never actually played the old version. So, um, oh, geez, Deanna mentioned there Aventuria for games I want to play more of. <laughs> uh, yeah, but have you even played that this year? I was kind of discounting that because I don't think you've, oh, you've actually played that this year. I might not even have played this year. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Euro Gamer Girl was saying fantasy deck building co op. Uh, and so that's where Aventuria came up is why well, have you <laughs> it's, okay it's, but that's the deck building that's deck construction where deck you're construction, building your deck, deck before building. you play yeah. you're not improving a deck or during play see Anna, I to be honest I do miss some deck construction the problem is most deck construction turns out to be magic which is just a money pit which yes. I have no interest in ever getting into again. Well, I, Aventuria is one of those. If I played it enough, I might get into it. We've only ever played with just set decks. But even with set decks, there is the thing where you get treasure at the end. Right. And you always have a 30-card deck. So when you add in your treasure, you have to take something out. So there's that aspect. But yeah, it's totally deck construction. It's sit down before you play, sit and play, build your deck, and then play it. Yeah, no, and uh, what I miss, I, and again... It wasn't a great game, but I enjoyed it. it was um, Vampire, the card game, like the, the old vampire deck building that's game back. that we had. Uh, that's, that's that was back a, in a way. It, it wasn't a great game, but there was something about that particular deck construction game that was hitting, hitting a mark for me, the even more than that. The thing with that one was multiple players. It wasn't a one versus two. It was right. political. It was you wanted three to five to, I think you could play like eight players. Like together that, yeah. playing that one it was ridiculous and there was voting and there was some neat stuff i made an unbeatable deck in it that seemed broken that was well the yeah, yeah again it. it wasn't a great game but there was something about some of the mechanics and the way that yeah. game played and, and it wasn't as much of a you know you need to have the rare card that you have to maybe get uh yeah. it was easy enough at the time to get all the card more or less all the cards and just build whatever decks you, you wanted needed. yeah um and that was that was another enjoyable part you know if you can get the set of cards and just choose from you know way more cards than you can you're allowed in a deck to build that one small deck but everyone has the same cards to choose from uh then it's fun all right i think we'll do one more i don't know what time we actually got it started but it's almost 10 30 so yeah. uh pax is asking what's the best iconography you've seen in a game and i'm running it through my head um i'm sure most of you know tool games but i'm I, like i'm I, I know there's a perfect example and i'm not well, a lot of people are, are, have definitely necessarily called it out as the best but brought up race for the galaxy no that's whenever not you're the talking best about that's, that's one of the worst <laughs> the, the icons don't even make sense for what you're trying to do like they're not tied to the actions uh race for the galaxy has brilliant iconography because once you learn it 
Right. You don't need the rule book. Everything's perfectly clear on the cards and you can look at it at a glance. But, but learning, learning is not <laughs> is huge. Yeah. And Where, I do not think it's good. Whereas whereas a game like Anachrony, again, it just Anachrony really is made good. sense. It's you know, you, there. there were a couple of things you were like, oh, what is I, but as soon as you learned what a couple of the strange little things were, I, it was great. Oh, uh, 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 Vinhos Deluxe is up there. Um, Preda Porter was definitely not. That's an Eno tool design, I think. Uh, I just feel like there's a perfect answer here, and I'm forgetting it. Yeah, and I'm there trying was to think something. of... I remember something being out on the table and going, oh my gosh, the iconography on this game is perfect. I can clearly s- sitting back what everything is and how clear it can be. <laughs> Point salad. I don't know if that's I, really icon. I don't know if I call that iconography. It, it's it's literal representation. It's so like, yeah, they're icons, but they're not reminding you of actions or where to place. Them. Point salad does work really well. You, you basically the, the rule book doesn't even have much on it. It is slick. Yeah. Which and kind of my for laying out this game and going holy oh um. Bastille from Queen Games. Bastille's iconography was fantastic once you knew how to play. They were huge. They were big. It was easy to see. Like, clearly showed you put two cubes back in a bag and pull cubes out and do this. I, I, of all games, like, that that was a hidden gem from us when we brought that back from Origins 2019. I think we brought that back. But yes, have playing Bastille was just, like, beautiful iconography. Like, like just big, bold, clear. The board was numbered one through 10. It was really clear what order to do things. There was a track on the side that summarized how scoring worked that was there for the whole game. You knew when you got to the end, you were going to go through these steps. And it showed you there was a clear break in the middle of that game where things changed. That was fantastic. But yeah, that's the game I was thinking of. I just like, I remember the first time I set it up and played it and taught it. And I was just like, wow, the iconography in this is fantastic. Like it's one of those where if I had totally forgot how to teach someone, if I forgot a section of the board, someone would be like, oh, does this mean this? And they get it right. And right. that's where it was great. Uh, one game that I see mentioned a lot, and uh, while Mo doesn't tend to do online research, I do, uh, mm. is Yokohama. Yeah. Yokohama. Has, I've got you that know, one. It's pretty good. A lot of icons and uh, generally pretty clear. Uh, and oh, that, a lot of people are mentioning the Gallerist Lisboa as well. Yeah, I don't. Those are two different games. Uh, those are both Ian O'Toole art uh, by and Vitala Serta games, the Gallerist and Lisboa. Right. Which I have not played either. I, and I see Terra Mystica mentioned here, but I don't know. I don't does I don't feel like that's no super awesome. <laughs> I, I I don't agree. It, it, if there if there was one. a better way to explain the point bowls, the power bowls, then maybe. Um, mm. like, and I guess when you lift the things off, the symbols are pretty good. Well, okay. One that's mentioned as just okay iconography is Great Western Trail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that fits. It's, you know, just, that, that's just one okay. where I definitely have to reference the book. So Snail Runs is totally agreeing uh, on uh, Bastille. Literally said, you know, iconography was great. Someone who was playing for the first time with experienced players was fantastic. I didn't have to ask. I could just glance and get what I had to do. Right. Oh, that game was fantastic. Like the only hard part about it is teaching the cards, like what the different numbers on them mean, and then making sure people actually look at the reference sheet so they're trying not trying to hunt for a card that's already either doesn't exist or has already been taken. Like there were aspects of that game that weren't easy to learn, and it's not the best game out there. But for iconography, it it's probably the best game I've ever played. And I don't think you're ever going to find anyone else out there shouting out Bastille by Queen Games. But hey, we dig it. There we go. Uh, good night, Pax. Uh, yeah, and one thing, I uh, one game that I, I agree with, although I haven't played it physically, so I, I hesitate to jump on the bandwagon. I'm waiting for my one deck galaxy to show up, but one deck dungeon is really mm-hmm. straightforward. It's like agility and a dice symbol. It's like you know, it's it's basic, but that's what it needs. Right. They could have made you. They could have gone somewhere more complex with it, but uh, and you know, tried to combine things together, and they mm-hmm. didn't. They just, you know, here's your stat, here's your die, you know, picture of a die, here's your, you know, a spell, picture of a die. It's all straightforward uh, and makes it really easy to play. No one I remember is one I brought up to your place and where we hadn't hung out in a long time and I shot you a board game with Zularetto. Remember mm, that one where yeah. you were building the zoo and you were putting the animals yeah. in 
and you had the the cool well cool i don't know what you call them. they at the time they seemed cool they were really abstract cars with wooden with lines on them that that um oh yeah you're gonna get sean upset euro game girl um <laughs> zula Reto definitely like just made sense and the the male and female animals and at the end of the round they duplicate and where to place them and the board had little reminders on how the pen scored and stuff like that. I remember that one being really solid. It's not the iconography in Card Kingdoms of Valeria. It's the oh, it's grammar. The iconography on those specific cards. <laughs> it's the grammar. I don't know. That's still the iconography. It's, <laughs> I it's guess. where the commas are with the icons. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, I, I, I cannot agree with the Duke. And the, or what is it? The Dukes, is it? Or is it? No, or the scoring card. The scoring yeah. cards of Kingdoms of Valeria. I would take strong exception to everything else. Absolutely. Except the scoring cards. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's another one? Space base. Space base is like people get that right away. Although I, you know what? I, some of those power cube well, things. That's the cubes. That's not iconography. That's just the power cubes and the text that goes with those don't have symbols. Those just have text for what they do when you spend your cubes. Yeah. Yeah. The Dukes, yeah, yeah, it's the Dukes. Uh, the Dukes. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, there we like go. the See, Dukes, not we sat me. down with the designer, and the designer literally said, "People tend to get this wrong. This is how this really works." It's so we knew how you it got works. It wrong. <laughs> because you wrote it wrong. Yes. Uh, yeah, the way they worded it's 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 sets of ingre- it's sets of ingredients, but you just basically add them all up and divide by two or three or whatever it is. Yeah. You don't have to have actual sets of three of a kind, three of a kind, three of a kind, three of a kind. Yeah. yeah. That, that is the grammar in that particular one. Yeah. And it has frustrated me every time because every time I sit down, I think I get this wrong. I must do it this way. And I've done and it, you wrong do it again. the wrong way <laughs> every time. All right. I think we're probably good for tonight. We've got a lot of topics there. What do we even cover? We had Star Trek games. We talked about um, iconography, iconography games. We want to play more of uh, games too much that scratch theme. RPG itches. Too and much, theme. too much theme. And not even just too much. We just kind of yeah, talked theme about and theme. then theme and themes mechanics. and mechanics. Themes and mechanics and iconography. <laughs> so, oh, Deanna threatened a question. We'll do one more, I guess. I was just—I <laughs> said it at ten thirty. I was going to call it. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly hear your sausage making. The more questions we answer, the harder it gets to promote the individual episode and SEO it because it's too much stuff in one episode and no one can find it. It's silly, but it's we, and we, we also have a character limit on our uh and, and, on and YouTube yes. uh, on the YouTube uh and and on the notes, notes. like of all things. We 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 tend to do three to five questions every AMA. Yeah. What was awesome tonight is we didn't have to make up any. Absolutely. Like, like I, were, I didn't have to like we go on Twitter and of, grab uh, some question or a question the dice tower was asked. We're <laughs> all good. All right. Well, I that is it for our dog days AMA. Thank you so much for your questions tonight, lobbyists. And remember, we're here to answer your game and game night questions most weeks. You don't have to be here for an AMA. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. You could go to tabletopbellhop.com and click at the top of the page, the little spot that says Ask the Bellhop. Or you can just hit me up on social media. Just say, you know, tag me on Twitter and say, hey, Mo, I got a question for you. That works, too. 